David Popovici is one of the greatest swimmers of our generation. He recently broke the world record in the 100 meter freestyle at the European Championships, clocking an incredible 46.86. We've seen him in action for a few years now. He's only 18 years old, and at the time of that world record, he was only 17. In this video, I'm gonna break down his stroke. We're gonna look at how he actually swims as fast as he does. We're gonna talk about his hand entry, his head position, his rotation, and breathing, the way he kicks, the way he pulls the water, and what I think the future of this young athlete could look like. I'm also gonna break down how you can apply some of these stroke elements into your own training, and even talk about some different ways that David can actually improve himself. Yes, we all have the opportunity to improve. I have some race footage and also some training footage that not a lot of people have actually seen. So thanks again for watching, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Right now, the first thing I wanna focus on is his hand entry where he's entering the water and what exactly he's doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and slow this down. We're gonna go frame by frame. If you notice, he's entering right in front of the shoulder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a little arrow right there. These are his shoulders. And if you notice, his hand is actually entering the water directly in front. Now, another thing that you can do is you can actually put a line down the middle of his body, and that's like the laser, you can't cross that. So if his hand ever crosses above or below the water of that red line, uh, that's a no bueno. That's not good, because what you're doing is you're making your stroke inefficient, and you don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen. We're gonna play through a few frames, and you're gonna see what he's doing with his hand. Now he actually is entering the water a little bit early. I know this is very nitpicky, but if you look at that, if you remember that line that I drew, I'm gonna draw it again. This is sort of the midsection of his body, and definitely you don't wanna cross it, and he doesn't, but if you look at the direction of his hand, I'm gonna change the color of this arrow, his hand is actually pointing that way, and if you notice, he's actually going to sweep his hand out and then pull back. So I'm gonna clear the screen, now watch this in slow motion. Oh, I gotta go back, if you're gonna watch it in slow motion, let's go back in time a little bit. So if you can watch this in slow motion, he enters the water, he's actually gonna sweep out, and then he's gonna pull. So that's why it's so important to enter the water right in front of your shoulder, because here is a little bit narrow. Here's another angle of it. I have a few different shots that we can look at. Now this, I believe, was training at, uh, at some championships, not the Europeans, but a different competition. He's doing like a warm up the day before. Um, and so that's just looking at his hand entry. I wanna look at his head position. His eyes are looking down. That's the frame that I want. So if you look at when he takes the breath, there's this beautiful position right there where one eye is above the water and one eye is hidden underneath the water. Now in my last analysis I did about a year ago, I actually was given a lot of criticism about this, this line that I just drew. So this is his body line right now. And in that video I drew another line that was the water line, and this is the horizontal plane. Now if you notice, there's a delta right there. That difference is an opportunity to reduce drag. Remember, the water is 800 times more resistive than air, so if you wanna swim faster, you have to actually minimize that angle. And this is, this is sort of an extreme version because he's getting a breath. This is also in training right here. This is just a screenshot, this is not competition. But you can see how important it can be to maintain a low head position in the water. Because if your head goes up, then your hips go down. And when your hips go down, you create a lot of resistance with the water. And we don't want that resistance. So it's really important to keep your head position in check. Uh, the other thing actually you can see from this angle a little bit better is where the elbow is relative to the hand. So if you notice right here, it's going to go ahead and go back in time just a little bit, maybe one stroke. There it is, beautiful. You look at that head position, look at the head, how much of the cap is above the water versus below the water. His eyes are looking essentially straight down. It's a little bit of an angle, but for most swimmers, you should think about looking down rather than looking forward. And then I wanna focus in on where his elbow is relative to his hand. In swimming, in freestyle, in the perfect freestyle, your elbow is always above your hand, both above the water and below the water. And this is a prime example of that. You look at the line that the elbow is at, look at the line where the hand is at, and that's because you wanna set up your hand above the water to initiate the catch with your fingertips first. And in order to do that, 
your elbow is going to be higher than your hand. Under the water, I do have some underwater footage in slow motion that a lot of people haven't seen before, so make sure you stick around for that. But you'll be able to see that early vertical forearm that I mentioned oh so many times. We're gonna come back to the EVF, and if you don't know what that is, make sure you watch in a few minutes. We're gonna go into detail about that, and that is the pull. Now what you can see from above is the rotation, and we're gonna talk about the kick, but you can see, that was really fast. <laughs> we're gonna go back just a little bit so you can see what just happened. So you can see this rotation that's happening with the hips. I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit, and I'm actually gonna point something out, and if you see it, let me know in the comments what you think of his stroke. But you can see his whole body is rotating. So if we just go back a few frames when his head is down, at this point, you can see his body's like a square, but you don't wanna spend a lot of time in that position because this is actually the slowest position in swimming freestyle. It's actually why breaststroke is such a slow stroke because your body is in this plane and your legs are so low in the water. In freestyle, in backstroke, it's a long axis stroke. So what that allows you to do, it allows you to oscillate from your right side to your left side. Now obviously you're not actually going completely from side to side, but if you look at this rotation, look how much narrower his body becomes through the water. Now my box no longer applies, so I'm gonna redraw it clear, his, the, his body is a narrower entity in the water and that's a lot less drag. So his shoulder is completely out of the water at this point. He's got a beautiful line right there. Oh, we're drawing it the wrong way. So that's where his arm is, right in front of the shoulder. He's breathing to the side and that's a perfect 90 degrees right there. That's what you want, you want 90 degrees. And then, there's one element that I don't know if you caught it, he's actually snaking his body a little bit. Now this is not good. Now I'm gonna draw an exaggerated version of this just to show the point. He's again, you know, better than 99.99% of the people watching this, unless he himself is watching it. What's up, David? So if you notice what's happening with his body, he's actually breaking a line. So he has a great line with his arm and shoulder right here. His spine is, is almost perfectly aligned, but if you notice, uh, and I exaggerated the red curve as to what he's doing. He's kind of oscillating. You'll be able to see that in, I think, the next frame that I have for you guys. So I'm gonna clear the screen, and I'm actually gonna go back a few frames, and you're gonna be able to notice it a lot more. So this looks good. He's almost over-rotating his head, so his head position right now is sort of like right there, but it needs to be right there. And so, again, I drew the line in an extreme version. It's very, very minor, but if you're trying to break the world record, if you're trying to improve a few hundredths of a second, all of these little details actually matter quite a bit. Now, if you're a beginner swimmer and you're looking at this and you're like, wow, this guy looks absolutely perfect, yeah, he's pretty close to perfect, but when you're trying to chase perfection, these little things add up to hundredths of a second, and even though it may seem insignificant in this specific moment, over the course of 100 meters, that can be the difference between touching first, breaking a world record, or going slower than what you had anticipated. So that's why it can be so important, and even these little minor things can really add up. So this is just something something tiny to, to poke at, and of course, you know, the best in the world are trying to improve. Now I do wanna look at the actual race footage. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Now this, keep an eye on the guy in the white cap. This is Popovici right there. Romanian superstar, he's 17 years old at this point. This is when he went the 49.86. I'm gonna go ahead and draw it, and I'm gonna talk about why this is so cool, and then we'll actually watch the footage together and see him break the world record. So we went 49.86. Now here's the crazy thing. On the first 50, he went out in a 22.74. That is blazing fast. Remember, this is a 50 meter pool, long course meters. And on the second 50, he went 24.14. Two. I hope the math adds up on that and that's how we get to the final time. But that right there, that second 50 split is absolutely nuts. It is so, so fast to do that from a push after going out in a 22, it's never been done before. Obviously, it's a world record. But there are other swimmers who have gone out faster than 22.7. And the reason why I'm calling this second 50 out goes to how much faster he has the potential to go. So I don't wanna spill the beans on that, but let's go ahead and clear the screen and keep an eye on the gentleman in the white cap. He's right there. And I'm gonna point out a few things. I'll only pause you know, twice, uh, maybe once or twice during the video. But keep an eye on that white cap and you're gonna see something remarkable right off the start. And there they are, they are off. Now the one thing that you probably noticed, maybe you didn't, this is the 15 meter line that I just drew my, my red line. If you look at Popovici, he's right there. And clearly he is not in the lead. 
So that means in the first 15 meters, it's so important in this race, look at all these swimmers that are crossing 15 meters and he's right there. So it just goes to show that even the best in the world have opportunities to improve, whether it's the start. Now this is a young guy racing against men. Now he's officially an adult, he's a man, he's 18 years old. At the time of this race, he was 17 years young. And the guys in the lanes next to him are easily 10 years older than him. They have you know, 10 kilograms of muscle over him. All of that helps in that maturity and that experience helps on the start probably more than anything else. And he is able to come back on the field and actually win and break the world record despite being, which, you know, maybe half a meter behind, you know, some of the other swimmers in his same heat. So that's uh, pretty incredible, the fact that he is kind of behind. You know, all the way now we're at 25 meters and he's still in the wash. It doesn't even look like he's gonna win this race. Again, we're keeping an eye on that yellow cap, or the white cap right there, I drew the yellow arrow. Now, keep an eye on his stroke technique. We're gonna talk about some other elements. He goes into the turn, everyone's kind of bunched up there. Doesn't really have the best turn relative to the field. A few other swimmers out there are giving him some pressure. But sure enough, that 24.1 on the second 50, that is blazing. And a lot of that came on the last 25 meters where the rest of the field really starts to fall off. He has rhythmic breathing. He's not breathing into the final seven or eight strokes and boom, touches the wall in a new world record, 46.86. But really that second 50 with a 24.1, that is where the magic happened. And here is some of that rare underwater footage. I'm gonna, oh, I put in slow motion. Look at that, awesome. This is really where the magic happens. It's underneath the water. We can look at footage all day over the water, but if you don't look at the underwater footage, you're really gonna miss out on a lot. And uh, let me know in the comments if you guys think I should go do an in-person uh, video session with him and, uh, and hang out. I think that would be pretty fun. So let me know in the comments. We can get some great footage, way better than this. This is from, I believe, when he went 46.98. The stroke mechanics look you know, pretty much the same. And it's kind of messy, but I wanna show the early vertical form. I think the next stroke will be easy. So that right there is what we already talked about. That's the hand position right in front of the shoulder. And you can see his line is just, you know, that's a great line right there. That is great, he's very narrow. Now let's get into the next couple of frames where we see the early vertical forearm right up. <laughs> Look at that, beautiful. It cut me off. I'm gonna have to go back one stroke cycle to be able to see it. And right there, I guess that's what we're gonna have to go with. So it's moving his hands so fast, but if you just can see it right there, boom. That is our early vertical form. I'm gonna write it out for you, EVF. Now I'm gonna, I promise I would explain what that means. EVF stands for early vertical forearm, and that is specifically referring to what happens right there. From your fingertips all the way to your elbow, that's like a plane of motion. A lot of swimmers only think you're pulling with your hands. Instead, you're actually pulling with your entire arm. And you wanna increase the surface area, which is happening right there. And that's why he's able to swim so fast. Not because he has great hand entry in front of his shoulders, his good head position, he's got a motorboat for his legs. I mean, all of that helps, but the reality is, it's all about what happens underneath the water and achieving this early vertical forearm. Now, if you guys are looking for ways to improve your early vertical forearm, make sure you continue to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video, and check out the My Swim Pro app because we have tons of great resources and videos and workouts that really focus on this specific skill. Now, I'm gonna clear the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and keep playing. I have another angle of him swimming underneath the water. There he is. So what's really interesting, now keep it, we gotta remember who he is. This is the guy, he's in the white cap. Ignore the swimmer in the middle of the screen. I tried to crop it a little bit for you. And you can see that early vertical forearm that we just talked about. It's hard because there's waves and slow motion, but you can see what's happening. Oh, I'm gonna go back a little bit so you can see that before we get to the overwater. And there it is. So if you see him, you can see that is the early vertical forearm, it's right there. The hand entry has been initiated, he's in a line, and the next thing will be grabbing at an angle. So his hand is where the red is now, it's going to be where the green is, and then he's going to, as he's pulling, I'm moving this green line, and that's what his hand and forearm are going to do, and it's gonna be almost vertical, and he's gonna pull the water behind him. And that is the trick, and that is the magic in how to swim fast. Not only freestyle, but all of the other strokes actually, the mechanics underwater are almost all the same. So I wanna play the overwater, and then we'll wrap this up. 
And there he is, slow motion. Now you can see over the water, he's got a motorboat kick behind him. He has the potential to continue to amaze people, so don't be surprised if this guy goes 45. I said it over a year ago that it's probably gonna go 46 and break the world record, and sure enough, less than a year later, or about a year later, he was able to break the world record and go 46. We know he's gonna be knocking on 46 mid, 46 low, and in the next few years, maybe he can go a 45 or something crazy like that. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this analysis, and make sure you check out all of our other content with my swim pro here on this channel and if you have any questions i'm doing video responses on the my swim pro channel so if you haven't subscribed over there make sure you check out my answers to your questions on the my swim pro channel wish you the very best and happy swimming peace